Good morning, St. Albans, and welcome to our service of Holy Eucharist as we celebrate this last day after the Epiphany, this last Sunday after the Epiphany. Epiphany was short this year, or Lent is coming early, really early, <clears throat> beginning on Wednesday, the 17th with Ash Wednesday. Just a couple of announcements, three in particular. One is we have a time capsule <clears throat> that we would like to fill with your prayers and your blessings for the church. When we had our fire and we took all the drywall and insulation out of the kitchen as part of its remediation and restoration, we found the old pass-through that existed. And there maybe was a window at one time to the outdoors or a pass-through from an old kitchen into the parish hall. <clears throat> but we have this space that is perfect for us to put our prayers and our blessings. And we've ordered a time capsule, stainless steel with silicone sealers that it'll keep everything nice and fresh and well preserved. And I thought it would be wonderful to fill that capsule with your prayers for yourself, or prayers for your church. How would you bless this church? And let those blessings sit within these walls. And so if you have any prayers, I ask you to submit them this week, or if you would like anything else in the time capsule, make sure that you get it to me this week so that we can get it in the capsule and in the space so that our drywallers who are, I think they're scheduled, We'll be able to seal them up in the walls of this church. And if such things such as photographs or uh, personal memories or we don't really have any relics in the church. But if you do have a relic and you know what they are, feel free to send them to me and we'll get them in there. <clears throat> It'll make this place even more holy, right? Um, this week, you will be receiving... A brown paper bag like this called our Lent at Home Bags. And it contains everything that you need for Lent this season. Beginning on Tuesday evening, which is Shrove Tuesday. And you'll see within here, you have everything you need for Shrove Tuesday. A small liturgy that you can say at table. Mardi Gras meats, beads, and a mask. As well as your very own pancake mix to make pancakes for Pancake Tuesday. <clears throat> it is the tradition of the church that the men cook pancakes on Shrove Tuesday, but because of the pandemic, we can't do that. So have, if you have a man in your house or not, make some pancakes in celebration of Shrove Tuesday, the day where we clean out our larders of all the good things that we have, our eggs, our butter, our breads, in order to prepare us for the fasting that is to come through Lent. <clears throat> you will also receive in here an Ash Wednesday bag that has in it pre-bagged ashes for you <clears throat> in a little glycine envelope. And there's not much, but believe me, these little things will go a long way. As well as some prayers Psalm 51 and the Litany of Penitence, if you wish to self-impose your ashes at home. Um, we will be pre we will not pre-recording, but we'll be live streaming our Ash Wednesday service <coughs> online, our five o'clock service. And if you don't want to come out, you can feel free to join with us. We're even including the Ash Wednesday bulletin in here for you. You can join us from your home and when we get to the imposition of ashes, you can grab your ashes out of the bag and just put them on your forehead as a reminder of our mortality. However, if you wish to come to our Ash Wednesday services, and we will be having two that day in person, outside at our, altar, at our outdoor altar, at both at 10.30 and at 5 o'clock, please bring these ashes with you and you can use them during the service. And then also we have in here a map <coughs> called Our Journey Through Lent. 
And it is the Anglican churches, the Episcopal churches, journey through Lent with many different reflections that you can use during this season. <clears throat> and if you so wish, you can color it however you want as you count down the days towards Easter. And we also have a little reflection bulletin that goes with this journey that allows you to uh, reflect on some of the things that they're asking you to reflect on. The last thing, oh, one thing we're including in here, and you'll probably be wondering why, is a seed packet. And the first week of Lent, according to this calendar, asks us to talk about our spiritual growth. The growth that we want to experience during the season of Lent when we focus on God's word for us. And what better way to acknowledge the, the growth of our spirituality than by planting seeds of new beginnings. And so each one will have a seed packet and then when it gets warm enough, please scatter your seeds wherever you think growth needs to happen. <clears throat> Just in case you're wondering. And then last but not least, you will each get, each get your own saintly scorecard for Lent Madness. Lent Madness is the brainchild of the Reverend Tim Skank in Massachusetts. And what it is, is a March Madness style bracket that competes saints within the Episcopal Church um, on a daily basis. And it begins on, they call it Ash Thursday, which is the Thursday following Ash Wednesday. And you can log online to LentMadness.org, subscribe, and you will receive an email that talks about the lives of the saints there. And you can vote on who you would like to win that saintly battle. And then at the end, right before Palm Sunday, you will find out who won the golden halo, who is the saint who won the battle. It is a fun time. It's a way to learn about the lives of the saints in our church and have fun doing it. So I encourage you to do that. So those are the announcements. I hope you will join us on Ash Wednesday at either 1030 in the morning or at five o'clock that evening. Please dress warm. As in all things Colorado, I think it's supposed to be a little chilly that day. And it will be, we will be having it in person regardless of the weather. I have a brand new coat to wear for it. So we will be having it outdoors. We will also be participating in Ashes to Go from noon to three. If you just want to drive by and receive Ashes, um, it'll be on Walnut Street between St. Albans and the, uh, the Methodist Church. You will see us out there in our garbs. But I hope you will join us either in person or online at five o'clock as we start this holy season of Lent. And now, beloved, let us quiet our hearts and our minds. Let the stresses of the day be set aside to be dealt with later. And let us prepare our souls and ourselves to worship the God, to worship our God. Amen. service of Holy Eucharist begins on page 323 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's say together, glory be to God on high. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, 
we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the lessons. A reading from the book of Kings. When the Lord was about to take Elisha up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. 50 men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they were both standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken away from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing yet. If you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elisha ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen, but when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us read together Psalm 50. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, 
God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judge. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John <clears throat> and led them up a high mountain, apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them not to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Today is the day our church marks the transfiguration of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This narrative is wisely placed as a nice and convenient transition point from the heavenly light of Epiphany to the very real and human passion and death of Jesus. Six weeks ago, we followed the star to find God in the form of a baby in Bethlehem. We have seen Jesus' baptism, his journey into the wilderness, and his early ministry. In three days, we will receive the ashes that mark the beginning of Lent and our journey with Jesus toward his death and resurrection in Jerusalem. In today's gospel reading from Mark, this moment of transfiguration, this mountaintop experience is a call to transformation. In the transfiguration, the glory of Jesus was revealed to the most ordinary of people, Peter, James, and John. High upon a mountain, echoes of Moses' commission on Mount Horeb and his receiving of the Torah on Mount Sinai come to mind. Something special is sure to be revealed to these three disciples if biblical history serves us well. This moment of glory allows Mark's audience to recall the baptism and anticipate the final triumph of God's Son. Here, the heavenly voice speaks words similar to those at the baptism, but with a significant difference. Earlier, the voice had announced, 
You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Addressing Jesus and focusing on God's pleasure in and with him. Here, however, the voice announces, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. The voice identifies Jesus directly to the disciples and commands that the disciples listen. What the disciples and Mark's audience need to understand is that Jesus is both the Son of God, powerful agent of healing and subject of dazzling glory, and the Son of Man, who will be betrayed and persecuted and crucified. The disciples, in common with many Christians throughout the church's life, want to have the glory that they can see without the message that they must hear. But the two cannot be separated. Over and over, Mark lifts up both aspects of Jesus' identity, relentlessly recalling that the suffering will yield to triumph, but that the triumph cannot be had without the price of the cross. We too are invited to see and listen to Jesus in a new way. Perhaps you have had your own mountaintop experience in life, those thin places where you have felt in your very fiber a close connection to the divine, to the glory of Christ. Perhaps those moments have literally been on a mountaintop, such as when I was waiting tables at Alta Ski Resort in Utah after college and took a break one day from skiing on top of a gorgeous 11,000 foot mountain and pondered where I was in life and where God might lead me next. It was on that mountaintop that I didn't quite know what specifically God was calling me to, but I felt a closeness to God and trusted God just enough to embrace the change that was soon to happen in my life. Perhaps those moments weren't on a mountaintop, but at a place you hold dear in your heart, such as the Solomon Episcopal Conference Center in Louisiana, which is located in the peaceful pines far away from the bustling city life of New Orleans. It was there that I experienced the transformative and unconditional love of God during my Curcio weekend. Perhaps those moments weren't in a particularly remarkable place, not on a majestic mountaintop or at a special retreat center, but in an ordinary, everyday location such as the place you live. For the residents of Angola, who are fortunate enough to be able to participate in a Kairos weekend, those who experience an amazing transformation in their lives by the grace of God, to whom Kairos team members share a simple yet profound message of God's unconditional love for them and true forgiveness that can be found through Jesus Christ. That mountaintop experience happens behind the very real, very cold and rusty steel bars of Louisiana State Penitentiary. And it's happening all around the country in prisons like the nearby correctional facilities in Denver for women, and in Sterling for men. Similar to you and me, the prisoners more than likely will never experience visions of fiery, horse-drawn chariots as seen by the prophet Elisha, or the dazzling, whiter than bleached garments worn on an otherworldly, transfigured Jesus as witnessed by Peter, James, and John. But the experience can be just as profound and transformative. Sometimes you just know when something holy and potentially life-changing has happened in your life. And you want to capture it like lightning in a jar. You want to stay on that proverbial mountaintop. However, the reality is most of us don't live on that mountaintop. We live in the trenches of our everyday, ordinary lives. And the prisoners will return to their cell blocks and still be addressed as a number and not as a child of God. 
but the word of God echoes through the valley just the same. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Listen to him. Listen to him. I wonder, how is God transforming me today in this transition from Epiphany to Lent? How is Christ revealing himself in the ordinary people and challenging experiences we encounter each day? Perhaps one gift COVID-19 has given us is the opportunity to slow down and more intentionally listen, listen to and reflect on the way of love, which is indeed the way of Jesus Christ, the beloved. Let us accept the invitation during the Lenten season that is upon us. Amen. Join, join us in saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found on page 328 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Kim, our bishop, and Bill, our priest, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life we beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government 
in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, and Jared, our governor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of St. Alvin and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. We have a couple prayer requests that we would like to offer up at this time. Mary Chella's son, Chris Ainsworth, who will be transferring from his present location to the suites <coughs> down in Denver, um, where he probably will remain for the rest of his life. Um, so please pray for Chris, as well as Mary and the family, uh, for strength and for healing and for peace. I also wish to offer our prayers for Gary Wagner, who is the brother of Gene Wagner, who is ill in Oregon um, and is uh, pretty non-responsive at this point. And so please pray for Gary and his wife and all the family, as, as well as Gene and Linda here. We also offer up our prayers for those who are still continuing to struggle from the coronavirus, those in the hospital, including Donald, Woody, those in rehab, including Joe, those who are long-termers who are struggling with the long-term effects of the COVID virus. When we implore you all, even though the vaccine is coming, many of you received the first and second vaccine, which fills my heart with such joy you don't even know. I ask you to continue to wear your masks and to practice good socially distancing until we can break this infection cycle sometime in summer or maybe fall, but hopefully this year. So lift up, let us lift up those people who we've named and those in our hearts for whom we seek God's grace and healing. Let us pray. Most holy and eternal God, healer of all souls, the great physician and shepherd of your sheep. We ask that you watch over, shine your light of countenance upon them, shelter under the shadow of your wings, our beloved siblings in Christ, Chris and Gary and Joe and Woody, Donald, Steve, and all those in our hearts who are in need of healing. Lord, we ask that you wrap them in your arms of love and bring them close to your heart of love and grace. Let thy will be done for them, for the, yours is the power and the glory. In your good time, O oh Lord, we ask that you heal them all as you so will in your way. Strengthen them, O oh Lord, to make this journey, this journey back to health, this journey back to life. Be with them all. Be with their caregivers and their doctors. 
Watch over our doctors and nurses as they continue to battle this coronavirus. Not only in this state, but in the, the entire world. Lord, we lift them all up to you and we ask that you bless each and every one of them. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I also wish to lift up to you a family dear to my heart that I've known for a long, long time. I counted 39 years. The Schneiderwin family who buried their father, Carl, yesterday. I had the honor of serving at his funeral and they are such a remarkable family. And I wish to offer up our prayers of support and healing as they now mourn his loss. And let us also remember those who have died in our own lives and lift up our prayers to them. Let us pray, O Lord of all comfort, you comfort the souls of those who mourn. And we lift them all up to you, the Schneiderwin family, the Joel family, all those who have suffered loss, the Cellas, the Haynes, the Rickers, the Steels. Be with them all, O Lord. Comfort them in their grief. Walk with them in this journey of mourning. Let them know that it is not unchristian to grieve. For when we grieve, it means that we loved. For that love is now lost. Let us also remember the good times. The memories that fill our hearts with love and our eyes with tears. And so, Lord, just be with those families who have suffered loss this year. Show them your love and your grace. And let them know that you are walking this journey with them. We lift them all up to you, O Lord. And we ask that you bless each and every one of them. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I don't know if anybody's celebrating a birthday or anniversary this week, but we are going to pray for you anyway. So if you could turn in your prayer books to page 830. <clears throat> Let's pray together. Prayer number 51. For those of you who may be celebrating a birthday this week, um, and we don't know about it, but we will find out. So let's pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts be your peace which passes all understanding. Abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And for those who may be celebrating an anniversary this week, we offer you this prayer. O gracious and ever-living God, look mercifully on your children as they remember the covenant they have made. Grant them your blessing and assist them with your grace, that with true fidelity and steadfast love they may honor their vows and continue living together faithfully in this life and in the age to come have life everlasting. Amen. It is Valentine's Day today this 14th of February. And I know many people did get married on Valentine's Day as a good way to remember their anniversary and never forget it. So for those of you who are celebrating a birthday or an anniversary, the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. And now I wish us to pray prayer number 54, which is on page 831 of our Book of Common Prayer. It's a prayer for those we love. Sort of fitting on a day like today. Let us pray. Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us to thy never failing care and love. For this life and the life to come, knowing that thou art doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you do have prayers that you wish to have prayed for during the week, please email them to me and I will make sure that they get out. 
either to our daughters, if you wish a private prayer, or to the congregation, if you are looking for good prayer warriors as well. And now the peace and love of God be always with you. And also with you. Let us share God's peace. Peace. And love. Peace. And love. And now, beloved, let us walk in love, as Christ loved us, and gave for himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Thanks come unto thee, O Lord, and of thy mouth have we given thee. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we offer you this bread and this cup. Given of the earth and made by human hands, it will be for us the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. Amen. We're using Eucharistic prayer too today, and that is found on page 340 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are, are full of your glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make 
with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee. The memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with his grace and heavenly benediction. And also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may ever dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Beloved people of St. Albans, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul into everlasting life. Take and eat them in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy, with thy heart by faith, with thanksgiving. You are all invited to come here today between the hours of 10.30 and 12.30 to receive this Blessed Sacrament. Just come into the main doors that face 6th Street, receive it, and you are more than welcome to sit in our parish, in our church, our sanctuary, in the pews, and just reflect on God's blessings and grace. For those of you who are continuing your fast from spirit for, for communion, we offer you this invitation. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, and remembering particularly our own parish and those worshiping there, we long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. We believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since we cannot at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all our heart, our souls, and our minds. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until, by your grace, we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Amen.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and that are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Beloved, on this last Sunday of Epiphany, please always remember that life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this journey with us. Whether or not we are headed up the mountain, or on top of the mountain, or headed back down. So always be swift to love. Make haste to be kind. And know that you yourselves are loved by a loving and living God, the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. And the blessing of God, Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. And now, until we can say it again, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Because next week it's mm, none of those A words. <laughs> Have a blessed week. We hope to see you Wednesday for Ash Wednesday. Amen and God bless. <laughs>